you beautiful people. Welcome to AAA Short Stories by Nelson Nick. I'm your host, Nelson Nick, and I'm here to help you in any, any way we can. First of all, I'd like to thank all the messages and all the emails sent by the followers to better this project. Since I'm a beginner in podcast, I have a lot to learn. And the experts are the ones that are teaching me to be better and get even more better. So, today we will, we will be discussing Taste Like Chicken. But before we get into the short story, I'd like to go ahead and give kudos. Kudos to NBC Universal, especially the show of America's Got Talent Champion. Normally, when I critique a TV, if it's excellent, what I do basically is give it a four star and release the details. But this season, America's Got Talent, The Champions, this is beyond. I gave it five stars. So, I'd like to thank Simon Cowell for producing and executive producing this type of show which is extremely difficult to do. And he did it, and the team uh, with Heidi Klum, Mel B, Howie Mandel, all the crew in the back. Terry Crews was the host for this season. We also like to send kudos to Nick Cannon for doing an excellent job when he was with America's Got Talent. Tyra Banks did an excellent job also. So for America's Got Talent, I give it five stars, and the winner for this season was, exactly, I'm not giving you a spoiler, I'm not ruining it for you. So when you get a chance, maybe in YouTube, go to NBC.com, see the shows, and see exactly what I mean. I mean, this was extraordinary. We, as the people, the viewers, on occasions we voted for the best talent, the best skills that we had. But 50 states were picked uh, and several followers or judges from the 50 states were working on it. I tried to go vote, but I couldn't vote. It wasn't uh, available to the audience. Uh, I cannot complain about my life. Part of it is television. I love television. But a lot of people just don't understand that it takes a lot of work from the very beginning of pre-production. Who's casting? Who's on the crew? How much money do we have to spend so we can get this production going? America's Got Talent did Excellent, excellent, excellent. I give it a five stars. So, let's get to the short story. The setting. Let me give you a setting so you have an idea of where it starts. We are at a kennel at Medina Air Base, which is right next door to Lackland Air Force Base. And Lackland Air Force Base is where they have basic training. They train you for security police, law enforcement, cryptology, and many other talents, many other skills, many other tech schools. So it is a brisk night. It's around 60, 65 degrees. And the instructors have their students where they're training them at nighttime. And they have to go through a trail called the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It's very dark and you have to use a flashlight to be able to see where you're going while you're scouting with your dog. My job at the moment was as a kennel attendant. We had over 200 dogs. I was uh, responsible to make sure that each and every one of them had their food. If there were prescriptions by the vet, make sure that they ate their uh, medication, make sure that the double gate security system was uh, 
available at all times. One gate was to keep the dogs inside their kennel, and a second gate was in case if the first one opened, the dog is in the hallway of the building but cannot get out of the building. Now we're talking about some dogs that are really hungry. Not for food, we're talking about attacking. And if you get an example, at the beginning there were some dogs that they were training as sentry dogs. So if you have a suspect that is running away and you release the sentry dog, if by any chance someone innocent, could be a man or a woman, a child, gets in the middle, the sentry dog is going to bite them. It's kind of like a bullet. When you pull the trigger and you shoot, you can't call that bullet back. That bullet continues. So it's the same thing with a sentry dog. So when the sentry dog grabs the suspect, the, the handler has to go running after the dog and choke the dog off the suspect. But then, under a scientific method called principles of conditioning, you could release a dog, but if something happens with a woman or a, a, a man or a child or anyone that gets in the middle, you could yell out, which is called a standoff. And then with that out, the dog turns around, comes back to you, and doesn't bite anyone. That's a patrol dog. So now you know the difference between sentry and the difference between patrol dog. Now, I'm in an office and it's around 30 by 30 feet, 900 square feet, and there's a long table full of computers and monitors. There's a system where you see the name of the handler from where they're coming, if it's local, if it's state, or if it's federal police, the dog, what is the dog uh, trained for? Either if it's patrol, he's trained in narcotics, he's trained in explosives, and all the other details related to the handler and the dog, and how much training have they had. If the dog did not certify and failed, you gotta retrain again, but if the dog did certify and passed, now the handler and the dog goes back to their unit and they work. Most of the time you'll see a dog in the airport and it could be a drug dog or it could be an explosive dog. So whenever you see a police officer and their dog, don't go up to the dog and start petting it. Talk to the handler. And if you like to play with the dog, I don't recommend it for liability issues, but if you have like the Special Olympics and all of the participants want to be with the dog, a patrol dog will be able to let you pet them and play with them, not compared to a sentry dog. So you know the difference between sentry and patrol dog. So, what exactly is this short story about? Let's go back to the setting. It's nighttime. It's around 65 degrees, which has a beautiful, beautiful feeling of freshness in the air. The patrol dogs and their handlers, like I mentioned, go through the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and they're doing something called scouting. They're looking for the bad guy. So. There they go, walking through the Ho Chi Minh Trail, using their flashlights. Hopefully they don't find any coral or rattlesnakes. Jump into Annie's ears, find any bobcats, any bears. I'm talking about, this is a little scary, but this type of training is necessary because when it gets down to the nitty gritty, you're involved in something of this nature you're already trained. We already we did like the Ho Chi Minh Trail. That was a lot of fun. And the instructors were really scaring the crap out of everybody. So that's part of the training. So as a kennel attendant, my job was to take care of the dogs, like I mentioned before, and with other details. It's about 
8, maybe 9 o'clock uh, in the evening, and I got a knock on our door, and it's one of the instructors. So the instructors hand me uh, an aluminum foil filled with food, and I'm like, so appreciative, thank you so very much. So I go to the tables, uh, I opened up the aluminum foil, and it smelled delicious. Oh, this barbecue was super, it was nice. So I started eating it, and it was just like dissolving in my mouth, the barbecue with the meat. I mean, this type of chicken breast, so, so, so good. I kept on eating, but, as everything else, if you start eating and the more you eat, then you end up with nothing on the plate, in this case the aluminum foil, other than a few bones. So that was so, so delicious. It was great. So we're reaching around 10 or 11 at night, and I see that the instructors and the handlers are getting ready to turn their dogs in. And I open the door and I yelled out, Thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you! This was so good! Can I have any more of this chicken? And the instructors are like, Chicken? That ain't no freaking chicken! That's rattlesnake! I go, what? Instructor, that's rattlesnake! Did you like it? Oh, I loved it! Rattlesnake? i never eaten rattlesnake in my life! Hey, I'm up to anything! It's like, when you ask a child, do you like broccoli? Oh, no, I don't like broccoli. I hate broccoli. When was the last time you ate broccoli? I never eat broccoli. How the hell are you going to know if you like broccoli if you don't even eat the darn thing? So, I wanted more, but they didn't have any more. So let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Rattlesnake is delicious. And the way they explained it to me, if you're lucky enough to get a rattlesnake without him biting you, you see from the head and the fangs, and around three or four inches behind the head, you cut it, you make a hole in the ground, you put the fangs and the head in the ground and cover it. Then with a knife, from the bottom part, you start skinning the rattlesnake and with at least a paddle board with uh, small nails, you start placing the skin of the rattlesnake on the board and have it stretched so when it dries out, it becomes leather. You could use it for a hat, you could use it for any type of decorations. I don't think it's strong enough to use as a belt like Crocodile, uh, crocodile skin, but after you take the skin, you chop up different pieces of the snake, you season it, salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, whatever you like in your meat, and then you just go ahead, you barbecue it. I gotta tell you, I love barbecued rattlesnake. I hope sometime you have a chance that you can try it out. You got nothing else to lose. I mean, the head, the fangs, and the poison is buried, so you got some delicious meat. I mean, this rattlesnake tasted better than a beautiful breast of chicken to the best possible way it could be. So I do recommend Rattlesnake. Now, to recap, kudos to America's Got Talent. Thank you, NBC Universal and Simon Cowell. Remember the little things that I did as a kennel attendant. And there's a lot more stories behind this, which I will do in another podcast. If I didn't mention it, taste like chicken is this podcast, and this podcast is number three. Let me check my time zone. Again, 
as I always do. Thank you to the men and women of our United States military, our Army, Air Force, Marines, Navy, Coast Guard, Fire Department, Police Department, Medical Team, EMT Team. Thank you so much for keeping us safe. And as I see in my timeline, it seems like I got everything. So, I really hope you enjoyed this podcast. Uh, I recommend that if you notice any mistakes or anything that I did wrong, continue to sending us an email to a b c at nelson nick tv.com no c in the nick if you check out my public page you will have uh, links to our website www.nelsonnicktv.com you have access to facebook twitter tumblr soon we will be in iHeartRadio and many other details uh, in reference to who am I, why am I doing this podcast, and what the future looks like. So, thank you. Thank you so much for listening to Taste Like Chicken Podcast 3, and God willing, we'll be able to do Podcast 4. So, as in for now, I'm saying Nelson is signing out. You've got mail.